Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to the transfer show. If you're new to the show or haven't clicked that subscribe button yet, please do because any support is really appreciated and we give you quality content in return. Um, first of all, Sam, how are you doing? Good, mate. It was a uh... It was nice watching you stream yesterday after all the sort of technical stuff I had to put into it to get it oh to work. God. But once it, get, once it got going, it was good. It was fun to watch. Yeah, for anyone who's going to start up streaming, um, just look into the technicality side fix. It's an absolute nightmare at times, but we got there in if the end. If you haven't, go watch it because the VOD is on the channel now. So go mm. watch that. It's, it's, yeah. quite fun. it's quite funny. It's more relaxed vibe than these sort of things mm. as well. So it's a bit more chill yeah. it's a nice thing to have on in the background or something so i've just put a clip out on tiktok as well from the stream so the best yeah. bits from the stream as well so if you want to watch that then go ahead and do that now we've got a range of stories to get into sam um a lot surrounding manchester united at the moment obviously but it's because it's united and we're just you know heading into a big summer and a busy period so the first story i'm going to start off with is regarding darwin nunez and this is from an outlet i haven't necessarily heard of before i don't know if you have sam um, I might butcher this pronunciation, um, but Correa de Mahano, I, th- I believe that's what it is. Um, Correa de Mahano, maybe? De Man- yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Um, so, yeah, the, the reports from Portugal are indicating that United have made a formal approach for forward Darwin Nunes. Um, the multifaceted package includes both add-ons and potentially a player heading in the other direction. Bit of, bit of back and forth for this new nesting. I keep seeing conflicting reports as you do with most stories these days. Um, but he's obviously a player I really want. There's a few murmurs from people saying, will he suit the system? Will it, you know, is he good enough? You don't really know until obviously they move leagues. Like a lot of people say, well, it's only the Portuguese league or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But look Said at the that signings. About Bruno, didn't they? Said it about yeah, Bruno. Exactly. So look, look at the signings that have come from the, the Liverpool just signed Luis Diaz from yeah. Porto, and look at him, he looks like one of their elite forwards already. Um, we obviously signed Bruno Fernandes from Sporting Lisbon, I, th- I think players like Edison. Um, Ruben, Ruben, ne- Ruben Neves. Yeah, there's, there's, there's loads of players that have come from there and succeeded. That's not to say that he'll definitely succeed, um, but if you look at him, even in the Champions League, I think this is why maybe Ten Hag is going for him, because Ajax, obviously, they played uh, Sporting Lisbon in the group stage, so they played each other, obviously, yeah. twice. Darwin Nunez scored in one of the games, I think it was. Um, so he's had a close look at him and obviously rates him as a striker. The guy's young, he's 21. He's got decent height on him. He's quick. Um, he can play multiple positions, so he can play on the left wing as well. Similar to how, you know, like Cavani did at PSG. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, look, I everyone knows I've been going on about this guy for ages and I really want him. I, I don't see any other target out there now who I would prefer, to be honest. Um, it's just the price tag. That's the only thing. But, but again, it comes back to this. I say the same thing about Dion because Dion's 70 million or whatever. Like, 70 million pounds is a lot of money to spend, especially when reports are saying, you know, we've got a 120 mil budget. So then what happens to the rest of that? Do we rely on sales? Like, is that what we're going to hear for the, for the rest of the transfers? Like, yeah. so it, it all depends on that. But looking at other targets, Sam, is there anyone else you would prefer? Or are, are you a fan of Nunes yourself? Uh, I've not watched a lot of Nunes, to be honest with you. Like, I don't watch a lot of the Portuguese league. Like, I'm not going to claim to be like these people go, oh, I've watched this, he does that. The only yeah. things I've seen him in is the Champions League. Like, that's the only times I've sort of seen him play. Um, looks like a very dangerous striker, like say Cavani esque in the way he plays. I think is exactly what we would need. Young, good age profile. Again, yeah, the money's going to be thing, but then according to this report, there could be a player going the other way. So that might mm. bring the price down a little bit, which means that we can spend on other areas. Um, I know we're going to get on to later. A lot of players have left. And then there's a lot of rumours that a bunch of other players are leaving and being sold. So that could free up some more uh, transfer budget for Ten Hag to sort of spend a little more on, say, Darren Nunes or Frankie de Jong. And then he's got money coming in from sales to sort of get a defender, to get a defensive midfielder or whatever it is. So I think the only other guy you wanted was Nkunku, wasn't it? That was the only... Guy that we've been rumoured and linked with, but again, he's going to be a similar price point, if not maybe a little more. So it's kind of just like, who do you prefer, really? Because it's really going to cost you about the same. So it's, it's a good point now because I can't think of anyone else. Obviously, you've got ones that are out there, the young strikers. I think Newcastle just signed that Etika or something. I think yeah. a 19 year old scored 12 yeah. goals. 
in the league. You got, Jonathan, isn't... You got Jonathan David, maybe. Yeah. Um, you got him. He's out there. Um, who is the the guy we were linked with from? Um... Can't remember well, his name now. There's not a massive like striker mark no, out no, there, is there? No. Like usually, um... right, Julian Alvarez gone City, Haaland's gone to City. <laughs> um, all the other best strikers are signed up to clubs, long term deals. Yeah, long term deals. And so then you got Lewandowski, but again, going down the same route where it's like kind of age profile in it. You you want yeah. to get a young one in to work with Ronaldo. So it'd be yeah. interesting to out, see how that dovetails as well, see how much game time he's going to get and stuff. Um, because obviously if he's coming in. What are they going to say to him? You're going to play Europa League and then maybe a few Premier League games, or you're going to go with yeah. a two striker system, or do you know what I mean? So, all that needs to be discussed internally, and we'll just have to wait yeah. and see how it plays out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what are you giving for a rating sort of out of 10? Oh, with Nunes. Is, is it, is it moved up a bit, or has it gone down? Or are you still? Uh, I, I believe he's a, he's a priority target. Um, so that's got to push it up into the 70s, I'd say. But I just don't know about the price tag. I think. I think it'll be. I think this won't get announced till probably July, if I'm being honest. If I had to guess, yeah. um, but I think I'll say seventy five percent. I think, yeah. I'm probably at like six or seven out of ten. That's probably where I'm at. I think there's a lot of it. Like we said, there's always there's no uh, smoke without a fire, is there? So there's hmm. something happening because there's yeah. so many reports and there's so many details. Like I I read stuff that he's already agreed personal terms and shit. So I don't know how true that is. But, I think I think the Portuguese media are pushing this quite a lot. Yeah, you see that all yeah. the time. Um, but the same thing was happening with Bruno. They was pushing that a lot, and then eventually we ended up, you know, signing Bruno to the yeah. back end of January. So again, we'll we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. Sam. Yeah, I'm keeping that in it. But uh, the next one is uh, I feel like we've talked about him every single week, but it continues <laughs> on the saga. Uh, defender Yuri and Timber. We are monitoring FC at this point, aren't we? Just every week, United are monitoring Always. this player. United are monitoring this player. But apparently we have made the, him a priority sign in the summer transfer window despite having two rounds with Braga centre, two rounds of talks with Braga centre back David Carmo. Uh, I know there was a report recently where apparently the deals fell through or the deals in jeopardy because he's pledged a uh, commitment to Ajax to carry on and stay. Um, I know there was a couple of reports that came out. I don't know, how, again, how true they were, but that sort of seemed to put the dampers on this deal. But according to the Daily Mail, it's still still going and still priority transfer so yeah it's so there's a few things that happen with this timber deal so a lot of people including people like you know mark goldbridge who i know is he's in on it like he's he, he speaks to dutch journalists he speaks to journalists behind the board and stuff um and he's 90, 90 odd percent um you know i should say concerned then 90 odd percent positive that it's going to happen because from these journalists he spoke to i did a, he did a talk sports show as well and um, with a very credible dutch journalist and he was like trust me it's already done it's happening so there's conflicting reports again everywhere um he's, he's definitely a piece of the puzzle that ten Hag wants he, he's like a, a mega priority yeah. um for a center back and he's versatile again can play a number of positions so I think it will be done. I think it's just a bit of push and pull from Ajax because the, it's just a price now that the, I th- I'm pretty sure Timber's already agreed to join United. That's that's what's floating about. So if that's true, it's just agreeing on a price. Now, United are asking, I think, for about £35 million. Yeah. Um, But then I think Ajax are asking for about £45 million. Whether that's euros or pounds, I'm not entirely sure. But there's like a 10 mil difference. So you kind of compromise in that situation. And you say, you know, go for the, thir- the 5 mil in between. Um, and I believe that's probably what we'll, we'll probably sign him for about 38 million. I, I how think. Long anyway. How long has he got left on his contract? Ajax? Two years, I think. Two years. All right. So he's yeah. not like he's, he's probably two, three years. Um, but Ajax is saying they're going to put his wage up to what he would earn at United. So he'd stay there for another year and then sell him next summer. So they'd get right. more money for him. Um, Cause obviously right. he'd have another year in development playing yeah, yeah, in the Champions yeah. League and stuff. Yeah. Um, so it, it seems to be a reoccurring theme with this, with the Champions League, to be honest, because I'll, these are, all the players are saying it. Timber saying, well, I can play Champions League with Ajax. Darwin, Nun- Darwin Nunes. Yeah, can play with Benfica. Yeah. And then De Jong can play with Barcelona. So it's the, the, this is why they say Champions League is a massive thing because no yeah. one wants to play in Europa League, let's be honest. So, I mean, nobody wants to play in the conference, Europa Conference League either. I mean, exactly. we're, we're that this close to playing Very in close. there. So, yeah. If it were uh, for Brighton, yeah. then we'd be in there. Yeah, but um, well, it went for West Ham, yeah, just cocking it up. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, yeah, I think, it, like you said, I think it's like sort of 8.5, 9 out of 10. I think it's probably going to get done, if not mm. this month, definitely before July, I think it will get done. 
Ten Hag's made it. He's going to definitely sign an Ajax player, and he seems like the most likely Ajax player that he's going to get. I don't see oh, the Anthony rumors seem to have died down. I don't think that's on the cards anymore. I don't uh, think that's going to happen anyway. Not heard. Finished. Not heard about Lissandro. Uh, is it Martinez? Um, the the centre back. No, yeah, I've not heard much about him. Uh, Gravenberg's has gone to Bayern. Uh, is it Matt Swaye? Matt Swaye. Yeah. The right back you're on about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. He's got he's going to Bayern as well, apparently. So is uh yeah, there's a couple of players disappearing, but Timber seems the most likely. So for me, yeah, eight point five nine out of ten, nine out of ten, it seems to be like it's gonna get done this. Yeah, I, I'm gonna give it a ten out of ten. I think we'll definitely sign him. Honestly, I'll put my neck out there and say that well, I think we're definitely gonna sign him. Um Moving on to outgoings rather than incomings. Um, this is from Samuel Luckhurst of the MEN. Again, another story that's been floating about for, for a while. Um, Manchester United have offered Wamba Saka to clubs. So it's starting, it seems like they're starting on the outgoings now. Um, I think we discussed Wamba Saka numerous times before, Sam. Yeah. And he's just in a Tanag system, the way he builds up, the way he's possession based, risky. I don't see Wamba Saka fitting in that system at all. I think he's still doing a decent job, you know, for a mid club table. Maybe if he goes back to Palace, um, Southampton, know, something yeah, like that. Yeah. I know there's uh, rumours that he hasn't settled in in the north as well, um, which, you know, sometimes it can happen. People forget that players are, are actual people. Do you know what I mean? They're moving from a certain place, moving from all the family, the friends and stuff. And then obviously you can say, well, the big wage that they're on is kind of a compromise. I, I get that. But that's not to say they're not human beings. And then, you know, sometimes players just don't settle. It just doesn't work. No. Um, and it hasn't, you know, you have to wash your hands and say, we'll take, you know, half the price we pay for him. I think we paid 50 mil, didn't we? Yeah. So if we take 25, 30 mil, then we'll be happy with that. And then you can add that to the transfer person, maybe go get uh, another young right back if possible. So if if, the, if they've offered him to another clubs and then it's just into player fancies it, that's the only thing because they are well, uh, above their rights to say, well, I've got a contract, so I am going to stay here, and there's nothing they can do about it, essentially, um, unless you sell them for a really, really cheap price. Or, but ultimately, the players have to agree to remove. So it all depends on that. So I, I'd probably give it a, I think it's fifty fifty at the minute. One Bissaka going yeah. because I've not heard much from the player side where he's like he wants to leave, he wants to do this, yeah. maybe he wants to impress under Ten Hag. Who knows? So I have to wait and see. Yeah, I just I don't think he's he's right for like. I think he's been here a couple of years. He showed no improvement on the attacking forward thinking front. And again, that's something Ten High like the way he likes to play. It's exactly what he wants to do. Uh, it's what Ollie wanted to do and it didn't work. Um, I think it's what Ralph was trying to do as well. Just he's not the right man for the job. Um, defensively, one on one, fantastic. Not what not many players better one on one defending and tackling. But yeah, I think he's best for like a mid level. Mid-table team, Southampton, uh, like you said, Crystal Palace, someone like that. I think they'd be great back there or at one of those clubs. And if yeah. if we take get twenty milli for him, fuck it, just take it and just yeah. move on. Absolutely agree with that. What what are you saying? What, what, uh, like you Alex? said, fifty fifty. It could go yeah. either way. I I it could end up going. I, I could see him going on loan. I could very easily see that and going mm. on loan for a year. But I could equally see him staying and being like a squad member as well. I could see that happening as well. So, like you said, 50 50 could, could go either way. This interesting. Um, yeah, it's going to be so interesting this summer because I know we've, we're going to touch on it a little bit later, but we've obviously had four outgoings that have just been announced three, over the past yeah. two days like a lot of like bang, bang, bang. It's, it seems like the, uh, the lot of, they want a lot of social media traffic. No surprise there. It also it? seems like we're, we're we're doing multiple deals at once, which is unusual for Man United. Yeah. Like, we, yeah, don't, so, we can't do this shit. We seem yeah. to be negotiating for Darwin Nunes, for Timber, for De Jong. Like We seem to be doing multiple things, which never happens for us. So yeah. that's maybe, maybe there is a big change. Well, maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, next next story is uh, AC Milan, British Dortmund and Atletico Madrid have expressed interest in Diego Dallo over the last year. He's valued at 25 million euros by Man United. Unless they are offered a fee in that region, he's due to be part of the squad next season. Again, that's Samuel List in the MN. Obviously, Dallo was on loan at AC Milan, played pretty well from all accounts. People seem to have liked what he did when he was there. Under Ralph, he seemed like a rejuvenated player, mm -hmm. seen one of the most improved players, kind of dropped off a little bit after. But to be honest, the whole team did. I don't know, like nobody yeah. in the team impressed <laughs> besides Ronaldo. So that could just be a result of that. Um, I think Ten Hag might like him. I think Ten Hag would be like, 
forward thinking full back, uh, can cross, can make a pass a ball, likes to get forward. He's equally he's decent going back, not like Wan Bissaka level, but he's decent enough that I think uh Ten Hag could work with him. And then if again if Wan Bissaka departs, maybe he gets in a young, like you said, the young right back. And then that's your two, mm. that's your pairing to uh, compete for the right back spot. But um, yeah, I don't see him going anywhere, to be honest with you, uh, unless somebody like somebody comes in 30, 40 million or something, and then you can't say no to it. Um, but yeah, I see him being part of the squad next season. So for me, it's about two out of 10. I don't see him going anywhere. Yeah, I'd agree with the rating. Um, it's the way we won that low, because as you touched on then, the first, I think I remember seeing the start, like first 10 games under Ragnick, he was the most improved player. Like his, his, his stats were backing it up, his performances on the pitch were backing it up. And then, yeah, maybe it is a case of because the whole team weren't performing and they were all kind of under this dark cloud of going out of the Champions League, um, not really fighting for top four and just everyone waiting for the season to, to end, really, like most of us. Um, so I think there is a player in there. I, I, I even said it under Ole. I don't, get, I, I don't understand why he never really got a chance. Like he, can, he would consistently play one Saka when he was playing awful. Oli, Oli did that a lot though. There was like, like we said, Bay didn't get a chance under Oli. Um, yeah, Maguire Luke, always started. Maguire just Ole. constantly always. starting. Luke Shaw constantly started, yeah. and like Teller's never got an opportunity. Mm. Obviously, Teller's had an opportunity since, but again, the whole team played yeah. terribly. So I don't know if that's just a result of that or whether he was just terrible so yeah I think the one word I'd use is competition I think they, they are desperate for competition in that team because you need that as a spark to, to keep your performances at high level that's why City do so well and they're competitive on every front because obviously they've got world class players on the bench but he will drop Maurez like that and he'll bring yeah. in Bernardo Silva on the right he'll drop Foden like that um, a lot of players at United, I feel like the, the, they are privileged and they shouldn't be removed from the position. People like Rashford, I'm talking about, Shaw, yeah. Maguire, because they're internationals, they've done well with the country, they've done okay for United. They, they seem to think that they can't be removed from that position. So I think in order for Dallow to succeed, yes, he needs decent coaching, um, but he also needs someone in there competing with him, scrapping for that spot, who's at the same quality, if not better. Uh, it, I think it, so. It, it happened with Shaw, didn't it? We bought Tellers in and then yeah. Shaw became Shaw but okay, I lost. Mm. And just like competition, he realised he was going to lose his place and stepped up. Um, I think United suffer from that old England mentality. Do you remember in England, it'd be like the same team over and over again, right? yeah. regardless of how shit they were doing, like the golden mm. generation. It'd be like Lampard, Gerrard, like Terry. It's always the same. Even if they, we didn't, we went out in tournaments dead early and stuff, and then you have people like Skulls being played out of position, and it's just yeah. like never play. Just, really, they really play Carrick either. No, England. so you need this. You need balance. You need competition. That's that's yeah. That and is, you, know, no. you need to know if you're not playing well, then you don't play. Yeah, like so, like you, like you said, Pep. He bought hundred million for Grealish, and he's not he's not started. Yeah. Most he didn't even so in the last game of the season. He didn't even bring him on as a sub. He was no. losing. He didn't even bring his £100 million no. player on. So there's, there's levels to it. You need to keep the standards absolutely high. Um, and what happens with the right-back position, I don't know, because if we don't sell um, Juan Basako and we, we have to keep him because there's so many other positions we've got to sort out, you, you have to, you know, it's going to be a tough one because I don't think he's good enough. But Dallow, I think with the right coaching, can be good. Uh, and I think he'll definitely stay at United. So I, I won't even give it a one out of ten. I'll just say he's, yeah. he's staying. Yeah, I, just, I I think we've said it on several videos. It's going to be we're going to need patience with Ten Hag because he's not going to be able to solve every single player. Like you're going to, end, you might end up next season. Yeah, we might get a centre back or a midfielder and a striker, but that right back position, that left back position is a problem, and he's not going to be able to fix all of it this summer. So you need to give him a couple of transfer windows, let him get it sorted. It's going to take time. It's going to take patience. You're going to have poor performances on both of them. It's going to cost us, but you have to. Mm-hmm. Give it time, unfortunately. I think as well, if you're throwing the question out there, who's going to sit fit? Sorry, fit the profile. It's definitely Diego Dallo going forward. So yeah. he'll probably be our number one right back unless we make a surprise signing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Moving on. So this is from Fabrizio Romano. Sam. He says both Eric Bailly and Axwell Twanzebe are set to leave Manchester United this summer. Decision has been made. Uh, I'm I'm very interested to see how much we get for these. Because Twan Zabies had two not great loan spells. He went to Aston Villa, didn't really work out for him, then went to Napoli, hasn't really worked there, which I thought would be a good move for him because when we've seen players go from the Premier League to Italy, 
you think about even Smalling at Roma, the players that went to um, Inter Milan, obviously won the, the 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 title with Conte. It seems to have. This seems to be like a successful pattern of players going, especially from our team to Serie A. Um, but for for whatever reason, it hasn't worked with Axel uh, Twanzebe or or by at our club either. So, yeah, I'm interested to see how much they get through him. I hope they do well. Like I think Eric Bailly, you know what my thoughts on him. I think he's a very good player. I think there's something in there. I think if you send him abroad to like Italy or Spain, I think he could settle in a team and improve him. You know, if you send him to I don't know someone like Valencia, let's say, or someone like sixth or seventh in La Liga, that kind of position, he could. He could Vill- be, Villarreal, Villarreal or Sevilla, something like that. Yeah. Be a good if he if he manages to stay fit over there, then he could be an important staple in that team. That's it. That's the reason why we bought him. That's why Mourinho bought him because yeah. he was doing so well. In La Liga, um, he looks like a very combative, quick, athletic, you know, decent on the ball. He's everything you want in a centre back. It's just consistency. So, yeah, I hope Eric Bailly, uh, wherever he chooses to go, I hope, you know, we we'll probably recuperate 15 mil, I'd say, because he yeah. signed a new contract in it. Um, yeah. I think Woodward put that out there to kind of retain his value. So, interesting to see how much we get for him. And then Swansea, but the same thing. I hope he just finds a club, maybe if staying in England settle at a club like who are going to appreciate you a lot more not saying we don't as fans but if you go to like a Southampton said before Palace even Everton or someone like that and settle in and do well for him you know you'd be recognised there around there as, yeah. as what you should be a very good talent which he is he just needs to settle in the right position I believe so both of them to leave I'd probably give 80% I'd say I, th- I think yeah. they're going to leave not definite because you, you never know what can happen in the transfer yeah, yeah, window yeah. but I'll give it 80% yeah, probably in agreement with you there. It's just a shame. Like, I feel so bad for Axel because he had, obviously had that game uh, against PSG, which was phenomenal. Like, it's one of the best defensive performances I've ever seen in my life. And then, But then he had dropped an absolute stinker. Was it Everton? Who was that, sorry? Uh, Twan Zabi. Twan- no, Aston Villa. It was that. Aston Villa, yeah. And he just dropped an absolute clatter. He was just awful. So it was like the two sides of his game, really. Um yeah, I wish him the best. Hope he finds somewhere where he can. He's clearly got talent. He's clearly got something. So I hope he's it. with Eric Bay. Yeah, just injuries have not worked out for him, and I, I think Ten Hag is going to want consistency. Um, so I think he's just not going to sort of go with him. I think I think he's going to find a centre back pairing that he wants. Obviously, that's why he's going for Timber, so he knows he can rely on him. And then it's going to be Timber and Varan, I imagine, or maybe. Timber and Lindelof if Varane's yeah. injury records are not quite fit. So I think for people, yeah, that's going to be... Sorry. For people who don't know about Timber as well, just very quickly, he is very good in all aspects, all around. He's, he's, he's quite small. He's, I believe he's about five foot ten, something like that. Very good in the air. A very good ball playing centre-back. So him alongside Rafa Varane, I think would work really well. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens to Harry Maguire because Harry mm-hmm. Maguire is... <sighs> I, I believe he's going to be so far away from the team unless he really books his ideas up. I, d- I don't see him getting in that team at all. I think he's going to, uh, Ten Hag's going to strip him of the captain, sir. I hope so. What happens with that? What do you think will happen with that? Ronaldo gets it, I think. You have to give it to him. I think Ronaldo, it's nailed on yeah. to give it to yeah. who, who else is Who else are you going to give it to? Yeah. But then he's, he's on the air for another year, isn't he? And then he moves on. So do we have. I think, I, th- I, think, I think in that year, we're going to, Ten Hag's going to get players in. And he's going to assess the squad. He's going to re- like work out, all right, I need this guy, this guy. Like They need to go, blah, blah. And then he's going to work out, okay, find my captain, find who he is, build mm. long-term. But I think sticking on Ronaldo for a year, it's not going to do you any harm, is it? It's not going to be a bad no. thing to do. Yeah, I don't see him giving it to De Gea because I don't think he has that personality. He's not a vocal... As far as I see, he's not a vocal player. And he, he's, he's quite a level-headed guy and I think you need somebody with a bit of bite and yeah. fire I was going to argue for Bruno but this season is petulance and he's complaining he's done my head yeah. so I don't want him to have to catch the because it'll just I think it'll just make it worse if anything absolutely um, so yeah uh, I think Maguire does get stripped and I think he's going to be used as like a, a secondary centre-back I think he's going to be a backup to with Lindelof like a Europa League kind yeah of I think that's going to be where he is and to hopefully taking the caps to see off takes the pressure Mm. away from him I think I think it'll do him good I think it'll help him yeah well guys let us know in the comment section who you think is going to be the captain 
under Ten Hag's new regime um, because it's very interesting. Like Sam said then, there isn't any outstanding candidates apart from Ronaldo. Ronaldo's the only one with all the trophies he's won. How he's performed in that shit team last season is just phenomenal. The goals he scored, the big clutch moments. So there's only one guy for it. Um, how Ten Hag goes about it, I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do because either way, you're going to damage a lad's confidence, aren't you, if he's been captain for two and a half years now, three years, yeah. I think. Because it only made him six months in, made him captain dinner like yeah. that, which was a very quick decision, in my opinion. And I didn't very agree with it at decision. the time. Yeah. So I'm very interested to see what happens again. Yeah. For over the next kind of four weeks, this is what we're going to see. We, we have a, a new show and a transfer show. So the new show is every Tuesday and the transfer show is every Friday. So if you want to get your fix and your updates, that's this is where to be. Real Reds talk with Obviously, obviously uh, we, have, we have quite a few people leaving and announcements yesterday. Um, Paul Pogba's gone. Jesse Lingard's gone. Juan Mata's gone. Did one more go? Matic is going as well, isn't he? Matic. But he announced I don't that think... previously, didn't he? So. Yeah. Yeah, that got announced like towards the end of the season. I don't know if it's yeah. done like an official announcement like Matic. Yeah, or... I've not seen one I'm from Matic. Sure. But um, the one guy I wanted to pick out was that I think we've done our thoughts on Pogba and Lingard, haven't we? Like we yeah. sort of said that. It's off basically for them too. Yeah, it's sort of off. Um, but one matter, apparently Manchester United, according, this according to the MEN, Manchester United wanted to keep one matter and ease him into an administrative role. Yeah. They were prepared to offer him one more playing contract, but he declined because he wants to play regularly. United are hopeful Matter could return to the club in the future and believe he has what it takes to be potential as a technical director when he retires. I am in wholehearted agreement with that. I was hoping he would stay uh, and offer the coaching or technical, something like that. I was hoping that, but obviously he thinks he can play regularly week in, week out still, yeah. which I don't blame him. If that's what he wants to do, then God, please go do that and because he deserves what he's, uh, after what he's been at United and what he's done. So I think, yeah, go out and play regular and then retire. Hopefully he comes back to Old Trafford in some capacity. But that video he put out, it, <laughs> it hit the heartstrings a little bit. Uh, I won't yeah. lie. He was, was got, he's, apparently he spent like an hour on Old Trafford pitch by himself, just sort of yeah. wandering about and sort of taking it all in. And then he said, yeah, he'll miss us all, which was like heartbreaking to see. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Ander Herrera and David De Gea put out sort of similar sentiments about him, saying how much of a gen. I actually met him. Yeah. You might have seen the photo on our Instagram of me and him when I, w- I was working retail and he came in uh, towards Christmas time with his uh, sister, uh, buying stuff for like nieces and nephews and that. And genuinely nice guy, super mm. nice. Would was talked to me about United for like an hour. Um, I asked him for a photo and he was like, "Oh, of course, mate." Like happy yeah. to do it. It was surrounded by people just going, why am I shouting at him? And he was just taking his time with every single person, extra nice and it. Could not say more nice things about him. And it's just a shame we played him out of position for as long as we did. And you've seen the little glimpse of sort of talent that he's still got. Obviously, his legs are not quite there to keep up with oh, the pace yeah. in the Premier League, but mm. his intelligence is on the brain, on the on the ball, like sort of uh, sight and insight is still there. Like he's so... Mm. Maybe go play in La Liga, play in Italy. I think he could be very good for a team out there. Absolutely. He's definitely a man of the people as well. And you could just tell people love him at that club and they'd want him to stay around. You shouldn't keep players just on sentiment and saying, you know, just keep him around because he's a nice guy. You're trying to win trophies. Um, yeah. But if we, could, if we could go into that, whatever, was it ambassador role or something like that? Um, keep, keep around the club for something. I don't know what. I'm not, I'm not yeah. at the club, so I can't say specifically what. Um, so it would have been nice to keep all of him because he's a good guy to have around. Um, I think he could still do a job in, in La Liga, absolutely. Look at like David Silva, who went over, who very similar players, went yeah. over, did a job for Sociedad. Um, so he could definitely do a job there. And yeah, it seems to be like a, a like a theme with the Spanish players at United who just seem like really like, decent, genuine guys. Like Herrera, who obviously you're a massive fan of, Sam. And David De Gea seems like a really nice, you know, dedicated, yeah. genuine guy as well. So you had the three amigos, uh, you had De Gea, Herrera, Juan Mata, um, all done relatively well for our club, especially De Gea would say. Juan Mata, as you touched on then, played out of position, just played on the right, which I just never, ever made sense to me at all. Don't understand Two, it because... Two-time player of the year for Chelsea in the number yeah. 10 position. We played he him was, on the right. He was elite for Chelsea, like really, really good. And then we brought him. And then, again, it's just an example of the past 10 years, what we've done to players since we brought him in. We've just ruined him pretty yeah. much. So it is a shame on that. Um, I think we'll look back on his time with a, a bit of a smile. You look at uh, the, things like Wanfield, 
when he scored that scissor oh. kick. Um, oh. I watched that this. I watched that this morning. I was just yeah. scrolling through things and I saw it like absolutely amazing. I, I saw a clip the other day as well. I don't know if you remember. I can't remember what game it was, but the ball goes right up in the air, like thirty feet, forty feet, whatever. It's ridiculous. Comes down just one touch velcro, boom, yeah. like stops dead, yeah. kills it dead. And it just that's that's his class. Like technically, you've seen it even towards the end of this season now when he's coming yeah. on that little cameo sort of. His quality on the ball is undeniable. The passing, the passing as well. Like some yeah. of the one twos he was doing with Bruno yeah. and uh, Ilanga, like yeah. unbelievable. He knits, like, I so said good. that in the Brentford, he knits to play. People want to play with him, and that's what kind yeah. of guy he is. It's just he hasn't got a leg for the Prem anymore. So, yeah, I'll, I'll be more than happy to see him to go to La Liga or imagine him in the five side. He'd absolutely kill it. Oh mate, he'd, um, he'd get in my five side every week. Just got, yeah. Just, yeah, Giving the ball, like he'll, he'll score There's so, so many goals with him on the ball. ball. Unlike other players, we're not going to touch on. Uh, we wish you very well, one Matt, and we hope you do yeah. very well uh, wherever you choose to go. And yeah, that is uh, the transfer roundup complete, Sam. Um, I hope we have fulfilled your transfer fix. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're getting close to 200 subs now. Um, and yeah, Sam, where can they find us on socials? Uh, Instagram, Twitter. TikTok, get on the tick TikTok's exploding right now. So get on yeah, that. Nick manages that. It's fucking great. Uh, Instagram, we we need to push that. So yeah, if you follow, if you don't follow us on Instagram, please, all the links are in the the description. So go follow it in there. Um, we've just started streaming games as well. So we had our first FIFA stream yesterday live on YouTube yeah. with Nick and Adam. So that's going to be a weekly thing going forward. A couple of other lads we're going to stream some other stuff. Um, I've just created a Twitch channel, so that will be in the description as well. So if you want to follow on that, we're going to start some streaming on Twitch as well, which will be non-football games, because obviously there's... A bit of variety. We do, we do a lot of stuff on the YouTube channel, which is all football-related. We're going to do the transfers, the news, and some FIFA. Yeah. But just to break it up a little bit, because I know there's a big break in football during summer. There's no World Cup, and there's no yeah. so many summer tournaments. So... If you want to come follow us on Twitch as well, Real Reds Gaming, it's, uh, the link will be in the description. Come follow us. I'm going to play some Cyberpunk. Shreyas is going to play some stuff. So, yeah, all sorts of things happening. So, just type in Real Reds, you'll find us. It'll be all be there. We are literally on every platform. Pretty much. Yeah. It's like budget on everything. So, yeah, wherever you're at on social media or whatever type of streaming you like, we'll, we'll be there. Just type in Real Reds Talk. And you'll be like this video it. as well. Share it with your yeah. friends. If you've got any football fans or United fans, share it to everybody. That's the best thing you can do for us, just share it with people. And that's how it, it grows. And let us know about the captain in the comment section, yeah. who you think is going to be the captain next season. Um, because I want to see your picks. That's the, that's the main interest. So let us know. Perfect. Thank you for watching, everybody. Have a lovely weekend, or bank holiday weekend, should I say. And we will see you in the next one. The schedule will be dropping on Sunday. Um, yes. Sunday or Monday, sorry. So, yeah, we'll let you know what kind of content we've got coming next week. So, yeah, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.